Kundalini is the yoga of awareness and it's super badass. It uses your own energy. You do certain kriyas or meditations or breath work to kind of turn your body on and get it going. It seems kind of weird, like people probably look at it and think it's kind of funky. I've really incorporated Kundalini Yoga into my life and I found it to be extremely healing. I mean, I think it's a huge reason why my kidney function is increasing. My name is Julie Viscuso. In the mornings, I just practice kundalini and starting a meditation practice at about like five or six in the morning. I find that to be so beautiful and it's an incredible way to start the day. I know that's part of the reason why I've healed so well. When I was 14 and I was diagnosed with lupus, the way that I remember them describing it to me was that I now had a body of an old woman. I remember I didn't want to be anybody's burden, so I just kind of like tucked it inside of how it really felt because I pretty much was told that like I could die at 14, you know, it's fucked up. When I first was noticing that something was wrong with me, I had a grand mal seizure. I was starting to get such intense arthritis that I couldn't even turn on a faucet or like squeeze out toothpaste. I was so tired. And I've never really had a doctor tell me like why the lupus flares and they just say it's kind of a mysterious illness, but that didn't feel satisfactory to me. So I had systemic lupus, the one that can attack your organs, but I never had any organ issues. It was always affecting discoid lupus, which is when it affects your skin. And that's when I've gotten some really intense gnarly rashes. I turned into lupus nephritis after 20 years of having lupus, so the lupus went so nutso that this last round it decided to attack my kidneys. By the time I was diagnosed, it was already stage four and really aggressive. I started to swell up and my legs were starting to get so thick and really hard to move. I couldn't cross my legs at that point. And then they finally decided that it was just at a point that I needed to do dialysis. They had done everything they possibly could. You normally wait like two weeks to start the treatments, but I was so, it was so critical that they started me that day. Well, howdy. It is I. Julie Big Face and cute little Mr. Puppy. Well, it's time for another update. First of all, so you can see how large my face has gotten. Currently, I am hooked up to my first dialysis situation. And at the moment, it's just pulling away some of the extra liquids in my stomach. 70 plus pounds, yes. Once we do that, um, we will be able to start pulling out the toxins that my kidneys are having a hard time filtering. I am just so, so done with this water weight. Every moment I need to do anything, it's like a full-on workout. I'm really grateful that I'm going to be able to find some relief and start to look like myself again and feel like myself again. We've trapped, I can't tell you how many raccoons and yeah. squirrels, and now she feeds them. <laughs> <laughs> and they're the sweetest little creatures in the world, you know? Oh. Wait, which one feeds them? Carolyn. Oh. She makes sure everybody's got their own kind of food. It, it's been in this last year that it really hit her hard. To even be determined that you have lupus, you have to have seven of 11 criteria, and she fit them all, so. So at 14, she was diagnosed with lupus. And this kidney problem is part of the lupus. Yeah. But she's always fought back and, you know, really did have a positive attitude. So what do you think that comes from? Do you think it comes from you? I mean, I have a positive outlook too, but I think she has more of a positive outlook. <laughs> her, her cup is half full. Mine might be half empty at times, you know that. <laughs> I'm still at my folks, but luckily it's pretty nice here. It's been really nice to be close with my parents and just be able to feel really taken care of at any moment 
I know they totally have my back, and that's huge. <laughs> I know that's really huge. She's always been a yeah. star. Yeah. Just very energetic, very positive, fun to be around and have around. She's had a lot of friends. But about eighth you grade, know. she started having some symptoms of things, and then it was diagnosed in her freshman year in high school, and that's yeah. when everything started. But, you know, with medications, she found a lot of relief, and then she was frustrated with having to be on medications, so that was difficult. Well, she tried to stay away from a lot of the Western practices, mm -hmm. you know, just because the, the approach is different. So she's tried, you know, Eastern and holistic. But because the physical condition got so bad, I mean, we just had to lean towards Western medicine. I think she's incorporated all of it into a more holistic approach, mm -hmm. you know, with her diet and her exercise, her attitude, doing the yoga, you know, really pursuing a positive, I can do it get it done, I'm going to be better, attitude, you know? And we see that every day. Yeah, my like, my epic dream is to live in a cabin. Like my vision, what I see is that I'm on a long, like a wooden deck, probably a wraparound, that'd be awesome, in a rocking chair with a dog, with a river in front of me. That would be, that would be the dream. So I've always, hoped to have a career that I could do that, where I could work remote, or like if I was going to be a motivational speaker, I mean I am, well, when you are gonna yeah, be when I am going to be a motivational speaker, I'll be able to just travel and then come back and retreat because I think having like a sanctuary to come rest and kind of regroup is really important. I go hiking like hopefully two, three times a week. I'd go every day if I could. When I go visit my friends in the mountains, it's guaranteed every day, all the time. That's like what you do. To describe my time at the hospital, I would say invasive and intense. Invasive because as soon as you show up at the hospital, you are constantly getting checked by nurses. You have people watching you like crazy. You're hooked up to a machine. So when I first went into the hospital, they put m monitors on my heart. So, I mean, I couldn't even get like up excited or worked up about anything. Like they come and check in on me. One time I really lost it and I had a total meltdown and I was just like, fuck, 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 like slamming my drawer and like pissed off. And you can't do anything because I was stuck to this IV like the whole time. Everywhere I went, I had to drag this thing with me. You know, it was like a constant companion. And I remember that day the nurses came in and they brought me this crocheted blanket that helpers make patients. And it just felt really nice. It was like exactly what I needed. I was so grateful to be outside again. I'm such a nature freak. It's just so healing to me. It was so hard to be in this hospital room and not be able to go outside. So when I got home, I was shriveled small and weak. And I just spent a lot of time in the backyard. I really was like so close to taking my feet and putting them in these like pots of plants because that was like all the dirt there was and I was like I want to earth and like ground and do that but it was something that I tried to make the best of but um, pretty much while you're there you're just kind of you have to be available for your tests and your labs and and resting and food so you're kind of confined to a room and it was it was hard you feel really lonely and you feel you can totally start to feel like a victim you know that is like the easiest thing you could do because it sucks when you get out of your room and you go walking around you're like walking by these open hospital rooms and there's these people hooked up to machines and they're suffering it sucks so it is a challenge to stay positive in a hospital regarding my friends and people in my life that know about my diagnosis in my health situations. Oh, I am so blessed with supportive people. Um, people have been really awesome. And I only had a couple people that were really cruel that when I would have skin rashes um, that were so visible or hair loss that, um, that said some hurtful things that I looked really sick. I need to take care of myself. That was really hard because there is a lot of self blame with disease. You do wonder if it's your fault.
All right, follow me to the fun. <laughs> Please do not mind the rest of the mess. I get this shipment about once a month and I have to call and let them know what I still have, what I need. And I get manual bags. So if ever the electricity went out or I go camping or do something fun, I take these and then I just bring this little guy and you hook it up and attach it to the tubes. Uh, you always have a ton of these on hand because if the power went out for a few days, that would be a big deal. And I'm sure I would start to swell up. So we don't want that. It's kind of intense that this takes up so much space. And when I think about leaving my parents house finally and uh like that's a requirement that i'm gonna have to think about is just storage and it's sadly so much waste um it's pretty gnarly to throw this much stuff away every day but i cannot even tell you how grateful i am for all this stuff to me it's uh amazing because it's it's like what's keeping me alive and feeling really awesome so one of those moments you're really grateful for western medicine this is the fabulous machine. I'll show you how this works. These are the decks. You press go, load the set. That's where all the fluid pumps through. You just get it in really good. It's important to not touch any of the tubes and if they ever fall off, then I have to throw the whole thing away and start over, which is lame because it's just so much waste. So this will get attached to me and then it'll do it for eight and a half hours. Whenever I go, to people's houses and I just get in like focus mode that I have to figure out my living situation and like what room I'm gonna have and where the bathroom is. Is it long enough? This is what it looks like. Super crazy. It's, it's very bizarre. I've had a lot of people offer me kidneys, which is really weird because <laughs> it's, it's very bizarre to ask somebody for an organ. The issue for me is that even if it matches, then they have to test it with your body and my body could still reject it. So, but I really feel like I have a chance to heal my kidneys. So far, my kidney function has been increasing. So I'm feeling like I'm on the right path and I feel like um, all the stuff that I've been doing has even kind of surprised the doctors that my kidney function has gone up so quickly. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> my name is Alana Schmidt. Julie is my best friend in the world. The diagnosis didn't really change her. She's always just had this incredible bright, contagious light within her that she goes into any room and she makes people smile and laugh and she makes it feel really warm and everyone's loved. I've done Kundalini a few times and I've had really good experiences with it. It turns into a, a meditation because it's so physically demanding and the different things they have you do really require your focus. Kundalini has played a big part in Julia's positivity and just getting through this. It gave her a lot of things, it gave her a community to go into, it gave her something else to focus on, something to be excited about, and so I really feel like those played a big role in helping her get through. I think the Kundalini has been helping oh, yeah. her. Oh yeah. yeah, I think it's been good for some of her friends too because it just continues to reinforce that lifestyle, but uh, you know, I don't know if I'll do Kundalini though. You could try. Well, I might try one day, you never know. So now that I'm training to become a kundalini teacher, I really believe that along with kundalini, when you think about something really good, it kind of starts to like pick up momentum. You know, people start to notice that like things are starting to come into life and more doors are getting opened and life seems really wonderful because they're moving their momentum in a certain way. And when you think negatively and you get stuck in those thoughts, it does the same thing. It just pulls you down and it pulls people down around you. I think it's all about how you look at things. In every moment we have an opportunity to choose either fearful thoughts and think shitty, or I think you can choose to see love and you can ask yourself, what is this teaching me? So I say another mantra, it's a Hawaiian mantra, and it is, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. I say that constantly. 
And the reason for that is saying that mantra helps to see how you're feeling at that moment when you're feeling shitty. It is a moment of surrender and trusting that there is a purpose to it, that there are lessons to be learned. And if you're open to them, it might shift things, you know? Like I've always kind of felt like my body was talking to me. You know, all those years that it was flaring up, it was telling me to slow down. It was telling me to be kinder to myself. I grew up with a lot of affirmations and encouragement. And I realized that that's like a really important thing to me. It makes me feel really good, you know? And when people say things to me in an encouraging, loving way, I thrive. But I realized, why am I waiting for anybody else to do that for me? I got like this list of affirmations and I just started reading them to myself every day, constantly, over and over and over. But I knew that that's how I wanted to talk to myself. Like I knew that I needed to do something to like shift the way that I was speaking to myself. I think that we are all worthy of feeling important and good and happy and all of that. So I just kind of took it into my own hands. And I feel like it's really shifted my entire life. I feel like it's allowed my body to heal.